so you want to make your game better. Okay. These first four points are things that every game will do in one way or another, either in an over-the-top way or a subtle way, depending on what kind of game it is. And those mostly relate to game juice, or feel. The last two things on the list are about getting players and retaining them. So the first thing we're going to talk about is object shake. Game juice or feel is all about trying to make it so that when the player does something, they see or feel a reaction. So you'll see right here how boring it is when the player is shooting the ghost and there is some recoil and there's some knockback, but there's no shaking. So in GDevelop, it's really easy to add this. You just go to your properties manager, go down to functions and behaviors, and then search for a new extension. Search for shake, and you'll see that there's two there, one for camera and one for object. Both of them are very useful, but we're just going to use the object one for now. Click install, and then go to the object you want to shake, and add it as a behavior. And then go into the event sheet, and slot in the shake action, and fill out the variables. So now when I preview that, we've given a very small amount to the gun, and more to the ghost. So when you shoot the gun, it actually recoils in the character's hand, and when you hit the ghost, they wobble. But now the next thing that is kind of like Shake is tweens. You've probably seen tweens everywhere. Usually you'll find them at the very beginning of the game in the start menu. When you hover over an object and it grows to show you that it's something you're supposed to press on. So in GDevelop, this is also very easy. I'll show you by putting this button into the scene, putting it onto the UI layer, and then we just go to the object and add the tween behavior. This is one of the default behaviors, so you don't need to add it as an extension. And now if I go to the event sheet, I've made these two events. One for if the cursor is on the menu button, and one for if it's not. If it is, we do this action, to add a object scale tween. So for this all we do is give it a name, in quotations, tell it what scale to go to, so 1.5 means it'll be 50% bigger, and then pick from a huge list of different kinds of tweens. Personally, I like to use the ease out bounce. And then we pick a duration for this tween to take. So now when I preview that, you'll see that the buttons expand when I put the cursor over them, but shrink again when I take it away. And that's because of the second event, where I change the scale to 1-1, which is the original default scale. Tweens can be used all over the place for colors, to size, to positions, and so on sound effects. And I'm going to show you three ways to do this. Firstly, we go back to the event sheet and add an action when we hover over the button. And then we type in play and select play a sound. From here you can add your own sound effect, but we're going to create one using JFXR, which is built into GDevelop. We'll just click on the blip or select button until it gives us a sound effect that we like. When we do get one that we like, we just change the name and press save. So now when I hover over these buttons, the way to add game feel, or juice, is to make it so that when the player does something, they get a response. That could be a visual effect, or a sound, or both. And the more of these you have in your game, the more fun it's going to be to play. But sound effects that get played often are going to cause a problem. So if I crank up the fire rate on this gun, you'll see what I mean. You can't really tell, but each one of those bullets is a slightly different pitch. So right now it has a randomized pitch. If I change this to 1 and it's a static pitch, it sounds like this. which will get annoying really quick. So be sure to randomize your pitch. And then the last one is a rising pitch. So here we have a bunch of little pickups, and with a static pitch, it sounds like this. Which is fine, but if we give it a rising pitch instead, it's going to be so much better. So if we go into the event sheet, 
we play a sound, but the pitch is actually a variable of the player object. And so when you pick up one of these points, it plays the sound at that pitch, adds 0.05 to the pitch, and then restarts the timer. And then the timer is triggered if you haven't picked up a point within one second, which changes the variable back to one and deletes the timer. And that sounds like this. Which is much better. Next are particles. And we have a video on this already, so I'm not going to explain how to do this, but I'll show you the difference. So with the particle effects, the dashing and the firing of bullets looks like this. And if we take them away, it looks like this. Which is just sad to look at. It's a good idea to add particle effects anywhere where something is coming in contact with something else, or something is being fired or clicked on or done, to give the player some feedback on what's happening. Now we get into getting players and retention. And the first one is the art. If you know how to make your own art, by all means, do it. But if you don't, then feel free to use art packs. But make sure you're using all of the art from the same one. You might get away with mixing two art packs together if they're similar enough, or one is for the UI and one is for the game itself, but mixing objects from different art styles all together, it, uh, it's going to look ugly. So, GDevelop can help you out with this too. If you go to add a new object, you can go to the Asset Store, which has these amazing art packs right here for you to put into your game. And the best part is, once you find something you want to put into your game, all you have to do is click on the object, and you're brought to this screen, where you can see the animations by clicking here, and then you can click here to add the object to your game. And when you do that, you get all of the animations already pre-done for you with names and frame rates and all that stuff done. So yeah, be sure your art packs match and make sense together. And if you are going to create new art for your game to add with your art pack, use the colors and styles found in that art pack so everything still matches at the end of the day. A good looking game with art that makes sense together is going to present itself as something more high quality. And because of that, you're just going to get more players. And now, leaderboards. Not everybody enjoys leaderboards, but for the people that do, having them in your game will double, triple, quadruple the amount of time they'll play your game. It's a really easy way to add a social aspect to an otherwise single player game. There is no one size fits all way to make a game good, but with the right amount of game feel or juice and the proper art and a leaderboard, you can turn something as simple as a pachinko game into something that people will really enjoy playing. If I left anything out, be sure to comment down below so that people can see it and learn from it. I've been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.